Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop. We have Pete and we're supporting the RowdyRoman.com shirts. We're matchies today. Um, we're gonna do something cool. Pete's brother lives in Ketchikan, Alaska. Oh. The fortunate thing about that is that the mountain ranges give a lot of cool 3D topography. And so we decided to grab a slab of what we think is oak. And we're gonna do a pretty big 24 by 12 topography map of the Ketchikan area. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to cut this down and then we're going to take it over to the CNC and everything else is going to be done on the Onefinity. Um, I'll show you how I programmed this in Vetric and how Pete turned the map into an STL. So let's cut this down and then I'll print, show you some computer work. So the first thing we did, since none of this wood is really square, it's pretty rough, we just found like the, um, the area that is shortest. So we measured off of here and we measured 25 and we made a line so that we know our 24 by 12 is in this dimension. We're just leaving it rough there. So we're gonna cut that down with just a circular saw we have down there. And then we're gonna use this piece of wood and start from here. All right, so here is our piece we cut. It is oak, we can smell it when we cut it. You can see it's pretty thick. So that's what we're gonna start with. So we're gonna take it inside and uh, we're gonna get on the computer. All right, so what we're gonna do, we cut the board down actually a little bit smaller because it's very, very bowed. So if I take out these wrenches, you see when I put it in here, it rocks really bad. So what we need to do is flatten one side and then flip it over. So I just have these wrenches as the spacers. They're gonna go in here. So when I push down, it's flat. Back here, it's got a little bit of rock. So I'm gonna put one back in the back corner. And now when I touch all four sides, it doesn't rock hardly at all. So I'm gonna put some screws in to hold it down. I'm gonna come in through the sides because um, I don't have any clamps that'll clamp it down tight enough. And then we'll get our flattening bit and we'll just flatten right across the top and uh, we'll have one side flat to lay it down, upside down, backwards, so it'll lay flat, and then we'll carve out stuff. All right, so we just finished flattening the top. I've taken the screws out of the sides. You can see it's really nice and smooth on top. And when we flip it over, you can see now there's no rock in it at all. So that's the benefit of a flattening bit on top of this. So now we're gonna have to flatten this top as well. We're gonna repeat the exact same process. And after we're done, we'll have a perfectly flat piece on both sides. And then we can start doing our relief cut. So I'm just gonna repeat that process. Coming up, uh, I'm gonna find the highest point on this. As I jog this around, that's where I'm gonna zero it off, that's where I'll start. So I'll just take off a little bit there. I usually run one pass at a time, just so I don't go too deep because the thinner the stock, the thinner uh, we have to work with. So I'll do one pass. I'll uh, set my Z one millimeter lower, one pass it again. And I just kind of repeat that process until I see that we have flattened the entire surface. So let me flatten this side and then we'll start the relief. So at this point, we are flattened on the top, nice and smooth. I do have this little bit of lip. I didn't program it quite to go right over there, but I'm just gonna take a chisel and a piece of sandpaper. I did leave this extra wide. There's a reason you'll find out a little bit for uh, zeroing off of. So um, now I just gotta take this off um, orient it the way I want. I'm going to use blue tape to hold it down, not these screws, um, because when we do our relief, we may cut into those screws. So we're, we're going to use blue tape because I don't really have another way to clamp it down, and that'll hold it pretty well. 
Uh, let me clean up this, attach it back on here with blue tape, and then we'll start the relief cut. So if you don't know the blue tape method, it's pretty great. <clears throat> You're just gonna take some blue tape, go across, All right, so we got blue tape on the wasteboard. We got blue tape on the piece. Now we're gonna get some CA glue. So I have some type on CA glue. I'm just gonna spread it all over the tape pretty liberally. And we're gonna take our piece and we're gonna put it right on top. Just like that. And now the weight of this is gonna hold it down we could use some accelerant, but I want to make sure that the piece is good. So we're just going to wait uh, maybe five, ten minutes. Make sure that that CA glue is completely dried. And then this will be immovable. And then we'll start cutting our first um, roughing tool path on this piece. All right, we open up Aspire. We hit Create New File. We're going to do 10 wide by... 22 tall, one inch thick. Once we get to that, we're gonna click on modeling and we're gonna go into this uh, import model. And we're gonna select the catch a can model we made or whatever map file you did. Remember, you gotta watch Rowdy Roman's video, I'll link the description down below to create that STL. That can be used for uh, CNC's or 3D printers. All right, once we get that going, you can see down at the bottom, we got that blue line. It will actually load the file depending on your computer. It may take a while. Down at the bottom, you can see our boundary of our actual piece of wood in that red. You can see our STL is way bigger than that. So when we click on the STL, it gives us these options. And I'm going to change the uh, Y to 10. Make sure the ratio is selected. When I hit apply, it automatically ch changes the X. And that will keep our scale. So now it's fitting inside of the model. When I click on that model, I click snap to center and it puts it in the center of our piece of wood. I'm gonna drag this all the way down so that our whole model goes into that piece of wood because we wanna capture the topmost uh, mountains inside the piece of wood. We hit apply, you can see we're in the 3D view and we can see what it looks like in wood, which is perfect. We're gonna go back to the drawing tab over to the text tool, created a text. I put in catch a can and the coordinates into the text tool. And for some reason, this went vertically. Typically, that's not supposed to happen, but maybe that's what I used last. So I'll have to change that here in a minute. So I hit done. I'm going to move it up so I can see all the text really really big so we're definitely gonna have to shrink it but I'm gonna select what kind of text I like I wanted a little bit blockier letter so there would be more and to see it'd be easier to see so we went with this uh, gothic and then I clicked on bold get made it a little bit bigger just the, the wider the text is the better off it would be the nicer it would uh, cut out so this is kind of the text I went with. So I needed to go to rotate it. So I click on it. I click on rotate. I hit 90 degrees. I hit apply. Rotates it correctly. But I want the catch can above the coordinates. So I click on the text again. And it will show us. I have it right in the text. But for some reason it's upside down. So easy fix. We'll put the coordinates on top. The text on bottom. But what we see is correct so we'll click on the arrow with like the um, four-way arrows in it that's the resize move tool so when I click on the edges it will resize it and when I do it that way it'll keep the aspect ratio if I clicked and just dragged from the right it would uh, change the aspect ratio it wouldn't look right so here I'm just moving around and resizing to apply it somewhere in the water make it stick out and rise from the water because that's will be full of blue down there and it's a perfect place for it so I am finished I click on that vector of the text 
I click on create new component and I change the height of the component and we hit apply and then I click create new component and hit close and that makes a new 3D uh, component to the model and it actually makes the letters 3D. So if I hit toolpath, I'm going to just pin it there so it stays over there and I click on all of the vectors uh, images in there. I click roughing tool pass and I hit OK. I select the size bit. I'm using a quarter inch bit to rough it out. I click on model boundary because I want the whole model to be roughed out. So I just change some feeds and speeds and these just kind of come with experience. Play with these. There's some chip rate calculators, feeds and speeds calculators out of here you can use but I just kind of go by what I've used. We hit calculate at the bottom and it's going to show us actually what it's going to look like. So I hit preview toolpath and we can watch as the bit actually takes the material away. This could be a long time watching depending on how fast it'll go. So I'm going to speed up this video. You're going to just watch. This is again just the roughing tool pass. You can see on the bottom it almost looks like it just flattens and once we get up closer to the taller mountains we can actually see some of the mountains protruding through. So here it is really fast. And in three passes we'll get all of our roughing done. And then we need to set our finishing toolpath. So we check out the 3D model for the roughing. We're going to select the uh, we can see what time it'll take here. We're going to select the 2D model. We're going to select our model again and we clicked on finishing toolpath. You see the round like ball icon. Uh, I'm going to set it up for an eighth inch bit here because I'm thinking that might be enough detail. I'm going to put some feeds and speeds that I generally use for this. Again, this will be different depending on the bit. Hit apply and um, just double checking that I like what I put in there and we'll hit generate and this is going to show all the movements back and forth we'll hit the preview the toolpath it'll show us really quick what it is again when you're doing a 3d toolpath it's just one pass you notice the the roughing pass went down three times 3d toolpaths uh, 3d finishing just does it one from, well, in this case, uh, bottom to top. So we are getting much finer detail. So that's perfect. It, it can go a little faster because there's not as much material coming out, but you gotta kinda play with, the faster you go, the less detail it's gonna be. Uh, so we can zoom in and check out the model. I'm gonna look around, kinda checking out how it is. And I know I wanna put water in there, so I wanna make sure everything is deep enough. If I zoom in closer to the letters, I'm going to check out the letters. Are they readable? Do they look good? We can read what they are. Again, this model isn't going to be exact what comes off the machine. It's going to be pretty close. Uh, in my experience, it's a little cleaner coming off of the machine than the model. But I want to change to a 16th inch bit. I did that off camera. But I changed to a 16th inch instead of an 8th inch, and I got a whole lot more detail. Uh, I'm trying to go with the biggest bit so it'll go faster, but the detail just wasn't there. So I changed to a 16th inch bit, regenerated the uh, simulation, and was very happy with that. So now we just need to, uh, we can check and see how long it'll take, but now we just need to save the toolpath. So I click on the roughing toolpath, and I find the post-processor Onefinity. If that doesn't exist, you can download it from the forum and install it. And then I click on uh, save, and I'm just going to name this 3D roughing. Um, I want to save both of these toolpaths as separate files. It makes it a whole lot easier in the end. That's just what I've always done. Um, so I've done doing the same process for the finishing pass. All right, so what I have is I have my quarter inch bit in here. My material is blue taped on there and it is not going anywhere. It is now glued to that table. So I'm gonna go ahead and zero off the front left corner here because this is flat all the way across. 
Now I do have like a weird jaggy end, but that's okay. I left a inch in the file or half an inch on either side. So I have plenty of room inside this file. So I am gonna go ahead and put that bit, uh, the touch probe underneath like that. I'll move this over to right in front of it. I will connect the magnet. I'll go ahead and probe for X, Y, and Z. And now we're ready to go ahead and run the program. So let me take this off. I'll get my dust boot where my brushes just barely touch. Like so. Get my dust deal in there. Set my router number. To, we're looking at about four, 1800. And I'm ready to start the cut. So we're gonna start, and this is gonna go back and forth a bunch of times. We'll do a roughing pass, and then we'll come back and do a finishing pass with a smaller bit to uh, smooth it out and really get the detail. All right, so it just finished up. Got most everything cut off, uh, carved. I'm gonna go ahead and, right now we're not turning the controller off because it remembers where the zero is, the Z, X, and Y. We're just gonna jog this up. And we're gonna jog this away right now so I can bring you in and you can take a look at what this looks like. So here is what it looks like. This is the 3D roughing pass. You can tell this is where it's gonna say catch a can down here. And you can see I left some of the material proud over here and we're gonna use that right now. That's what it looks like from the side. All right, now we need to do a tool change. So let's pull this all the way forward. Make it easy on ourselves. Pull this forward like this. Remove the hose and the suck it dust boot. We're gonna take out the bit we have in here. It's our quarter inch. And we're gonna get our 16th inch. All right, so we got our 16th inch tapered ball nose. We're gonna put it in. To our collet. Tighten it down. Like that. Then we're going to jog it over to that side over here because we need to re zero the Z. We're not gonna re-zero the X and Y because our material is gone now over here, so we can't put that plate back exactly where it was. But this material is the same height as it was over here. So we'll grab our probe. Remember when we only do Z, we flip it oops, upside down. 
and we probe inside the recess like that. And you need to be a certain distance away from the probe or if it continues down, I think about 20 millimeters and it doesn't find it, it will error out. So I like to be pretty close when I start it. And just to test the continuity, when I touch that to this, it turns red. So we're gonna hit probe Z. It's gonna probe it twice. So now we know where our Z is for this bit because that changes, each bit is a different length. So our Z is different, it's to this bit, but the X and Y I have not changed because I did not probe for X and Y and Z, just for X or just for Z. So if right now I hit return to X and Y and it asks me to confirm, we're right at the starting point where the other bit is. That's crucial to have them exactly the same or this won't come out right. So we've done everything we can so actually for the sake of filming, I'm just not gonna use the dust boot. We're just gonna go ahead and plow through it. And this isn't gonna take off a lot of material because it's very tiny. So, and now we can close it up and we'll load our 3D finishing pass. It will do its calculations. We'll turn the router on and we'll start cutting. All right, so it finished up a few days ago. I haven't had time to get to it yet, but uh, uh, my kids cleaned up the front here. Uh, I haven't turned it off, so we're just gonna move the Z-axis back out of our way, and then we'll come in and you can take a look at how it looks. So here's what it looks like. It came out pretty nice. Uh, this is oak, so it's very fibrous. And we lost a lot of details in the letters, which is unfortunate. So uh, it just, once it grabbed these tiny letters, it just fibrously pulled them all out and they're gone. So we're gonna fix that in a different way. But the map itself is pretty good. We need to do a little bit of cleanup. Obviously we have a bunch of uh, dust and stuff on there. So we're gonna suck it up. I'm gonna take a nylon brush and kind of give it a once over. And then we're just gonna kind of sand and chisel away these letters to make that flat. And uh, then we'll cut it out um, and we have some epoxy to pour, so we're going to pour some epoxy. But that's generally the topo map. came out really nice. It's really cool. And you can see these flat areas where the water is going to be. So I need to now pry this off of the wasteboard. You can see that the blue tape held its own really well. Uh, I'm kind of worried that it's going to be too strong and I'm going to have a hard time getting it off. But that's what we'll do right now. So here's what the blue tape looks like and the glue is in between the two, so all we do is kind of pull off the blue tape like this. All right, so we got it out, and right now we're gonna put some tape along the side just to keep the epoxy from running over the edges. So it doesn't really matter what tape we're gonna use. We are gonna make a good lip for it just to keep the epoxy in. And we're gonna make sure that this gets rubbed really hard on the side because we don't want epoxy to leak through. Um, we're just creating a barrier, basically a dam for the epoxy to stay in uh, so it doesn't come out. So we are doing a very thin layer because we want the blue epoxy to be down in these valleys where the rivers are. So that is about what we're going to do. We're not too worried about the edges because we're going to take it to the table saw and trim this as we go. All right, so what we're going to use, we're going to use, uh, I have some Wise Bond bar and tabletop epoxy. Make sure you're not using a deep pour because it'll never cure. We're using like thin layered ones. I also have some Wise Shift this is a color shifting epoxy powder. It's blue, but it'll kind of shift between a blue to a deep purple. So it'll look pretty cool depending on when you come in and look, you know, what angles you're looking at. So it's blue water, so we're gonna use blue. So this is a one-to-one -one mix ratio. We're gonna mix this up and then we're gonna uh, mix in some color and then we'll pour in the river.
All right, you can see we're gonna cut out the uh, square inside because a lot of this is waste. So we're gonna do that on the table saw and we'll cut it into a square. All right, so here we go. We got it squared up. Looks pretty cool. It's a pretty cool piece of art. It's actually upside down it's like this. So we've got a plaque we're going to put down here. We're going to put that on the laser and laser it. But right now we're going to uh, turn it over and we're going to put a funny picture of uh, a brother saying he loves him. So let's put that on the laser and laser it. All right, so I just put it in the laser. We're going to do a special marking on the back. We're going to do uh, the face of the person who made this. And we're going to do, because it's a little uh, gift a present. So we're going to laser that on the back with the CO2 laser. I could do this with the JTEC. It would work, but the uh, CO2 will do it a little faster. So that's what I'm using. So we'll just go ahead and uh, laser this on. I'll show you what it looks like in, after it's finished. So what we're going to do right now is make a little plaque with these aluminum business, business card-like things in the laser. So we're just going to uh, take off the anodization. We'll put this uh, for uh, the wording on this thing, and then we'll attach it to the sign. But let's go ahead and laser this first. Just finished up. It looks really good. So we're going to go ahead and put that at the bottom of the sign. All right, guys, that's it. That's how we created this 3D topo map. It's a beautiful piece of art with a <laughs> funny custom uh, logo and saying on the back. We used the adhesive that came with the metal to just put it right on there. It's 3M, it'll never come off. We clear coated it and stained this side. We got that miters nice and tight. So it's a very nice piece of art. So if you're following along, I hope you have something that came out very similar. You could easily sell this for a whole bunch of money. It's beautiful art. So hope that helps. I hope you got to create something as cool as this. We'll see you next time. Happy cutting.